The problems. She gave me the love you but not enough crap last February. And the following April I discovered she was having an ear with a co-worker for three months prior and BD came shortly after that. As far as I know she is still in contact with him and for all I know it has progressed to or was a PA, I have stopped snooping. I convinced her to go one MC session in May and she couldn't keep NC with OM for more than a week. In counseling she professed that they are soulmates and she never loved me as much as she loves him now. He is married with two kids. At that point I knew she couldn't commit to MC and I asked her to leave as I won't have an open M I went dark as of five weeks ago. We are unofficially separated and she is living at her sister's house 45 minutes away. She comes and goes to our house freely to be with the kids although will not stay over and spends as little time there when I am home. Going dark and 180 seems to be the only thing that has diffused the situation and made it easier for me to cope. W maintains that she just doesn't feel it as far as being in love with me and that love is just something that happened, just like her affair. She doesn't believe that love is a product of cause and effect and that there could be any hope for us and R I admit that I contributed to the erosion of our marriage. We never really argued and when we did it was never productive. Up until two years ago we seemed to have a bulletproof marriage that was on autopilot and we took it for granted. I had a particularly stressful job for the last two years, have since gotten into a much better job, and was withdrawn and depressed and not there emotionally for her. She had withdrawn into texting and social media and began having more and more outings with friends from work. She seems determined to bring us to divorce and has been laying plans to move into a rented house in September in another town. Her intent in all this was to make it as amicable a split as possible through mediation and just continue to be great co-parents as we live separate lives. I am having problems ending this amicably and I still am extremely bitter and angry. I decided I needed a lawyer because how can one negotiate in good faith with someone who has violated the most sacred of covenants? I filed for divorce this week and she will be served on Saturday. It will be a tough weekend as I am sure it will elicit a hostile response from her after she learns I am seeking physical custody with her getting three weekends a month and one Wednesday night dinner a week. It will also be tough for me because this is the first step for it truly ending as I see no hope for the R given her stubborn fog. It just seems so surreal it is happening. We have two kids S14, D11. We have been married 17 years and known each other close to 30. I can't believe the person she has become. She is so selfish and emotionally bankrupt. She gave us no chance. I exposed the affair to his wife but she seems to be a sweet but weak individual who is just living with OM extracurriculars. She is also stuck because she is a stay-at-home mom with no family in the area. I even emailed OM to man up and do the right thing and focus on his own M but his response was it just happened and it was up to my W. I exposed the affair to all of our friends and with the exception of some other divorcees, who unconditionally support her, she has alienated all of our long-term friends and just doesn't care. She says they are awful for choosing sides. Her extended family knows but also unbelievably unconditionally supports her. Affair is just beginning to be exposed in workplace via gossip. I am thinking the D will take some time in my state likely close to a year and I don't know how long I will be able to go on holding out hope. I will be 45 by the time D is finalized and will need to reboot my life and put this behind me. I think a year will be plenty of time to hold out for any chance of R before it goes final and even past that my state has a 90-day waiting period as to when it truly becomes final. She has shown no signs of giving us a chance. I was doing positive 180 since she first gave me love speech and even after learning of the issue she even said at one point I know you have shown signs of change, that's what makes this so hard. As time went on, she detached even more and even seemed to reject any kindness I could show her. While I was was withdrawn and depressed and not there emotionally for her I certainly was not holed up in a dark room wearing my bathrobe, although I have found myself there once or twice since BD, I had my good days and bad days. For many outside observer and even those couples and families we were close to I was a great husband and dad and our marriage seemed solid. While her family supports her, they can't believe she is doing this and still consider me family. People and marriages go through ups and downs, and isn't that what for better for worse is about. I think she has rewritten history and focuses on the negatives to justify her affair. While I accept some responsibility, it wasn't all that bad. Since when is asking for a divorce the first move? Didn't she owe our kids the chance to save our M and try MC? Comments. I know you are hurt and are hoping that what you do will have her running back to you but exposing her is not the answer. Just speaking from experience my husband cheated amongst other things on my and for three years I protected his image because he was my husband and the father of my son. I could have made him out to be the worst person in the world but I didn't. We eventually separated and everyone eventually found out why and he began dragging my name through the mud and everyone he could. After a few months of separation, I started communicating with my ex and he made it his top priority to expose that to my family and friends. By him doing this I instantly knew that I couldn't not be with anyone who would purposely expose me make themselves look, feel better or make me come back to them. That is not love. Also, even though you don't approve of what she is doing that is still your kid's mother. Let them decide for themselves how to view her. Don't help them by exposing what she did. 
A child's mind cannot handle that. They will only that think I have a messed up family. Preserve their innocence. If she wants to be with him, let her. You don't want anyone who doesn't want you. If the only way she comes back is because he decides he doesn't want her, then you still shouldn't want her because you are an option. OP responds, Much of the exposure to our close friends, I have no family in the area, came as a result of me crashing and them trying to pick me up. It tends to all come out when you are that distraught. She even confided in some of our mutual female friends that it was just a strong friendship and she has been unhappy for a year, so it's not exactly her fault. W has a hard time acknowledging or being accountable for E. I have kept it from our acquaintances in town so I am trying to take the high road. I am not sure how it is being exposed at her work. She is not very smart or careful about it. I found the 100s of text and hours of phone calls on the phone bill. Unfortunately, S14 is aware of it and has saw the OM come up on her Facebook account. Again, she is not very smart or careful so she didn't log out and S saw it. He knows why mom needed to get her own phone. He is 14 and he won't accept that this is a mommy and daddy problem and that we will love him no matter what and everything will be okay. He knows things will never be the same and knows exactly whose fault it is. He harbors a lot of resentment toward her. Well, she was served on the divorce complaint today. Only response from her via text was whether she could take one of the coffee pots. I guess she really wants this and doesn't care, oh well. I said I want a complete list of what she would like to take and I will not do this in one-offs. She became frustrated and said it was just a coffee pot. I kindly reminded her that she owes me 750 for a well pump and septic inspection and that a 100 coffee pot just adds to it. I also reminded her that nothing should leave the house until the divorce is final. Her response, fine I'll get my own coffee pot. I am not allowed to change the locks so I will be taking a video of all the furnishings today. I don't know why but after my attorney called to let me know she had been served my hands started shaking and I felt like I was punched in the stomach. Why do I feel this way? Why would I want someone back who has done this to me and our family? The real fireworks will start once she finds out I am seeking physical custody twos or weds. Well, I saw the final on the motion for temporary orders. Lawyer should put it in the mail to her this afternoon. In the meantime, STBX sent me this in email. These are the items of ours I would like to have now. TV from the playroom that's in S's room. There are four TV in the house and I am asking for one. Kids need a TV as they will be spending half the time with me. It's obvious you will still have the larger one, plus the two small ones. Small computer you had gotten for S that no one is using. The kids need a computer for school. You have the expensive new one. I will have to buy a printer. Quiz and art coffee maker we have two and I am giving you the better one, which costs more. Faux leather storage ottoman in the playroom. These are not unreasonable requests as I am entitled to half of our belongings that I am not even asking for. These are just a few things I need now. Giving me these things does not disrupt your household in any way. I'd appreciate a response soon. From wife, I am not sure what to do. Part of me wants me to tell her that she will have to wait until the D is finalized. Ironic that she needs a TV since she bought one for the OM part of me wants to give her only the stuff for the kids who will likely be spending some time at her new rental house. Of course, she still is unaware of the D coming down and my intention to seek full physical custody with her providing child support. According to my parenting plan it will be a 60-40 split in my favor with the kids with me on all school nights with a wed dinner for her and three weekends a month for her. In the end the material possessions and furnishings of the household may be split because if the judge does not rule for me on child support, we will have to sell the house. I definitely will not respond until she receives notice of the temporary orders. I guess then I'll see how she reacts. Pretty cold so far. Never thought I would be in this place. Yesterday turned out to be an eventful day. I worked from home to be on time for my IC session and she showed up to continue to pack her personal items. We had some back and forth on how I had failed in the relationship that I was angry and how I am handling this divorce just cements that in her mind. She pointed to small moments in time where I may have had a bad day or been frustrated but to pin this divorce on me because of that without trying to fix our relationship is irresponsible as a parent. Again, I came back to the affair and how her involvement with OM and detachment had sabotaged any chance for reconciliation. Interesting how when she points out my faults, she gives me no chance to defend myself or allow for the discussion to progress to anything productive. I also had the wedding albums, pictures and any family pictures with her in it on the table and told I would be getting rid of them unless she took them. She said, well that's a little drastic and packed them in her car. If our marriage is so terrible and I am so awful why would she want to keep them? I know myself if she does take us to divorce it will be all I can do to forget about this sham of 17 years. She threw a parenting schedule in front of me for September and she said that she was planning her work schedule around it. I told her that I was not comfortable with agreeing to it and had my own ideas on the parenting plan. She asked what I meant by that and I told her my attorney and I had already filed a motion for temporary orders today that would have them at the family residence on school nights with liberal visitation for her, three weekends a month and wed night dinner. I also informed her that I would need to seek child support to sustain the family home. She went ballistic. 
told me that I am not going to take her kids away followed by some other choice words. I think I finally saw some cracks in the armor. She began crying in the most anguished way and said I was trying to crush her not allowing her to take furnishings from the home, making her pay child support and taking the kids. She said that I couldn't possibly love her to treat her this way. She drove away bawling. Funny that is what I have thought about her over the last few months toward me. She has been so cold-hearted with no remorse whatsoever. This morning she emailed me some other requests for parenting schedule over the next two weeks to which I agreed. I have still not answered her on the items she wants from the home. There was a childcare issue this morning with my daughter and taking my son to a sports tryout. I told her she needed to come home to be with DD. We texted this exchange. OP, are you coming home to be with DD this morning? I have an important meeting at 11. W, I went to work with no sleep last night, not that you care. OP, I do care, always have. You can sleep here. I will leave at 10 minutes before you get here. W, does all understanding go out the window now? OP, I am not sure what you mean by that. I will never be able to understand your decision. I am sorry you don't understand how I could feel this way. Despite all she has done to me I still feel guilt by how distraught this had made her. Maybe I haven't detached enough. Is she showing signs of coming out the fog with the realization that this fantasy divorce may not be all she thought it would be? That there are real grown-up consequences for her decisions? Is she responding to my assertiveness on how I see custody and property division should be? She continues to villainize me. Is hate and emotion closer to love than indifference? She received the motion for temporary orders Friday. I received an angry phone call from her. She flipped out on the proposed child support number and the schedule. She told me that she was going to move back in the finished basement. She is so delusional, insisting that we had talked about 50 over 50 custody, which we never did. Again somehow her internal dialogue is her reality. She implied that I was not keeping my word on custody and I reminded her that she did not keep her word when we tried marriage counseling or on our marriage vows for that matter. She arrived with a couple enabler girlfriends on Saturday morning and began moving in some of the new furniture she had purchased for the new rent. I didn't lift a finger to help them. I overheard her cancel her new cable installation. So, I guess she will be here for the duration until we sell the house and make the D final. She has made it clear that she doesn't want to argue any more translation, no talk of her indiscretions or talk of R. So now we are back in limbo. She will not use the master bath and tries to act like a house guest, asking me if it okay if she takes another lamp downstairs or can she put these groceries away. She will not stay in the living room with the family and retreats to the basement as soon as meals are done. It is so bizarre. Also texted me on the way home from the beach last night with the kids and that she was bringing home dinner. At 9.30 p.m., she told me that she was going to visit an enabler friend, another walk-away wife, who was having a crisis moment with her boyfriend almost like she was asking permission or over-explaining. To be a bold-faced lie, I told her that she is not required to tell me where she goes or when she will be back. I am not sure how to proceed now. I really cannot comfortably pay the mortgage on my house myself and we have 15000 in repairs that need to be done before we can even begin to sell. I am still going to go forth with the divorce proceedings and hopefully I can sort out this house problem before then. So, she has retained counsel as expected. I saw her counterclaim. I guess I should not be surprised that it was a pack of lies. She claims that she objected to my taking a new job in April with a 10% decrease in pay and that I did this to sandbag my earnings and prep for divorce. When actually the discussion was around how stressful my job was and hopefully, we can work on our marriage once I get out of my old job. Furthermore, I did not learn of the affair until after I accepted the job and I have been the only one advocating for R until she decided to sign a lease. All she is trying to do is reduce her child support payments if it comes to that. She also contends that I am trying to alienate her with the children by making disparaging remarks. This couldn't be farther from the truth. Like I said my S14 is old enough to form his own opinions. I have never said anything negative about her to the kids. Have I been sad in front of the children because of what she has done? Yes. Have I gone out of my way to defend her? No, but repairing her relationship with the children is her problem. She is also forcing a conveyance of the house to be maintained by one of us or for it to be sold. There is a 15,000 septic system issue and the house cannot be sold or mortgage refinanced until that is fixed. I'll be damned before I pay one red cent of those repairs to facilitate this D. So now I am stuck in limbo. I can't stand to look at her never mind being civil to her and co-parenting. I hate her so much for doing this to our family. I am really having problems with it. Can't sleep, stopped working out and starting smoking. I guess I am falling down on my 180. Weeks later. So, a lot has transpired since my last post. She has moved back into the finished basement. We have had some civil and borderline pleasant discussions since she moved back although the emotions are still very raw. She was none too happy on being forced to move back, on the advice of her attorney. She wasted 2k on painters for the rented house she will not be occupying and is on the hook to find new renters. We had a court date scheduled for last Friday. Thursday night prior I asked her point blank if this is what she wanted. 
She unequivocally said yes, no chance for MC or any more time to think about things and slow down the process. So, we went to court Friday. Oddly my vehicle was in the shop so we ended up driving to court together in complete silence. Funny the songs that will come on the radio during awkward times, rolling in the deep, we could have had it all, by Adele, with or without you. You too, because you loved me, Celine Dion which she promptly changed station. I know it was a song that she related to me in better times. We had a meeting with our attorneys and each other present in a small room to hash out some of the details of the temporary orders. Custody was no longer an issue since she moved back in but we decided to settle on a weekend schedule where each parent is primarily responsible for alternating weekends. I have no idea where she is at mentally and if she is going to act like she is no longer married I don't want to be on the hook for babysitting so she can go out and party. Very unusual dynamic during this meeting. First of all, her attorney and mine, both who happened to be women, were very pro-marriage. Her attorney even went as far to say that this seems like a shame and it has moved very quickly to filing for divorce. Both attorneys were suggesting we seek marriage counseling in the interim. I agreed that it was moving too fast but I have not been given a choice and I was receptive to MC all along. She did not say anything pro-marriage or MC during the meeting. We settled on the financials essentially agreeing to split the household expenses evenly. Then we discussed holidays. Since I have no family in the area, I expressed that I have no intention of leaving the house for the holidays and that if she wished to celebrate the holidays separately, she would have to go to her family's residences. This is where it got even stranger. She basically said we should continue to celebrate the holidays as we always do with her family coming to our house on Christmas and going to her nephews for Thanksgiving. We agreed that we would do that. I made one more point that if she continued her relationship with OM or acted like she was not married during this time that I would find this an untenable situation and felt that it would be an unhealthy environment for the children. Her attorney piped in and said that wife wished to tell me that she has ceased any emotional relationship with OM and that there never was a physical one. She does not intend to engage in any other relations at this time and hope I would do the same during this period while we are in the house together. Why couldn't she tell me this herself? So, we have a pre-trial date of Feb. 25th where our divorce can be finalized. In the meantime, we have to get our septic system fixed and put our house up for sale and decide who is going to have to leave. I am not sure how all that is going to happen in that time. I don't plan on doing any of that leg work. We drove home together in silence. I guess I felt good about it. I was happy that her attorney was a voice of reason and I am hoping it will be food for thought for W. The frustrating thing is that she is still in the basement. She acts like a visitor in our own home, we have no physical contact or intimacy, and only talk about day-to-day -day household things and the kids. She seems to very much overshare with me where she is going and what she is doing. She even skipped a party on Saturday night to stay home. Going back to believing half of what they do and none of what they say. My gut tells me that she wants me to try to win her back but I know if I press too hard or go too fast she will reject me. She has done nothing to express desire in working on M and has shown no remorse. Is she cake eating? Is she trying to slowly come back? Does she have to prove how terrible it was, is to justify her actions. I do want to save our marriage but I know the wrong approach will send her running. I feel like I am trying to feed the skittish squirrel. Do I ask her on a date? Do I 180 and go dark? Just did three months of going dark and not sure it mattered. I do not want to play these games. I absolutely still love her. I don't know if I could trust her. I know I would need her to get a new job. A. Because he works there and B. This third shift was, is killing our marriage. I know we would have to commit to marriage counseling. I think then I could move past it. But I don't feel that she is willing to do any of that. Heck she hasn't even shown any remorse to this point. I think I would need to understand how she could devalue our marriage so much and choose divorce without MC as a first option. Couple of years later. Unfortunately, things did not work out as I had wished and my marriage of 17 years ended in divorce after her Pia and not love you speech. While we were separated, I tried for a year and a half to be the best man I could be, to do 180s and try to light the way back home for her. After the divorce went final, I took the low road. I figured I had nothing to lose at that point. I told her exactly what I felt about her. I told her she destroyed our family and was a thief for stealing 50% of the time away from my children and held back nothing in the way of nastiness. I resorted to parallel parenting and completely disconnected from her. But whatever, kids are S16 now 20 and D13 now 17. I only communicated, if at all, through email. I hate her to this day. I have been through dozens of therapy sessions. Tried a number of different antidepressants but now I am afraid I will never feel normal again. I thought I might be doing better and on the right path for recovery but I found out today that she is in a long-term relationship and meanwhile I have been floundering and struggling to even find a date. I am angry, angry that she destroyed our family and she has landed on her feet. I on the other hand remain profoundly hurt and am lesser of a person than I was before divorce. Isn't four years too long to feel this way? When will the pain subside? Will I ever feel normal again? Probably all rhetorical questions with no good answers but I am just having a really bad week and wanted to vent. 
comments, I'm not going to give you the it will be better speech, looks, sometimes life sucks and some things happen that are out of your control. However, there is a lot you are capable of taking control of, but instead you are letting life happen to you and are feeling helpless. The anger and self-pity thing you've got going is going to radiate throughout your life and make everything, especially dating other women, very challenging. If you want your life to be better you need to step up and make it better because no one is going to do it for you. So, if you want some help here's what I'd recommend. 1. Come up with your life plan, mission and rapidly pursue it. Guys that aren't doing what they feel like they were meant to do often have issues with depression. 2. Get into great physical shape because that will positively affect your mood and dating options. Work out hard and eat healthy. 3. Buy a new wardrobe and choose things that make you smile when you put them on. My thing that makes me smile is a really nice watch that I wear every day and I got as a post e present. 4. Continue your counseling for codependence and try to figure out why you overvalue your XW and what you can do to move on. OP responds, I am currently in talk therapy but maybe that has its limits. I have been working out, did some wardrobe retooling, get out socially and somehow, I have been able to mask and suppress the bitterness but it is still there and the last couple days have been a kind of backslide. I appreciate the advice from all, the tough talk, pep talk and shared experiences. I know I have not been right for this to be lingering and controlling me for so long. If I can't forgive, I need to forget and let go. I will try keep my head on straight, take back the power, take agency for my life and carve out a new path. Happy New Year's to all and God bless. My comment, sometimes it takes almost as long as 10 years to forget about your ex. Eventually time will heal you and you can move on and forget about her.